now occurs to me as I've gotten ready to start that in my hubris I did not reorder us so we may not be in the correct order and I've managed to perfectly get all of us out of order so let's do a little boot scoot and shuffle real quick and with that two movements perfectly in order incredible welcome to stars without numbers revised Shipbreakers. This is the crew of the LAS Golden Goose. I am joined by our heroes. I I don't know that I've always called you heroes, but you are discussing highly moralistic topics lately. And for those of you that skipped episode negative two, you missed Minerva grappling with really basic 101 level philosophy questions that I just popped out of nowhere. <laughs> Uh, not not exactly the highest level of thought, kind of entry level, a manual Kant level stuff. But you know, I didn't think. Start somewhere. I, honestly, I don't understand the current grappling of philosophy. Right, I have to only do the stuff that I understand. <laughs> so I could I couldn't even pretend to jump to the highest level of things. Anyway, we are back. Sometimes when. Almost every time I have an introduction scene for you, there is no such scene today. Instead, we're going to ask about goals, which I sh probably should always be doing. And then I'm going to ask you some questions about what you do when you come out of drill space. Because you've never come out of drill space before on the show, and there are some important toggles and settings for your ship that we haven't <clears throat> discussed. Let us then turn to the goals. Dunamis... I'm starting with you because you're on the leftmost part of the overlay. All right. Be before I jump into it, I just want to say, if you haven't watched Negative 2, you should, because I was surprised by some of the answers that Minerva gave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but for uh, Van V's goal for this session, it is to hopefully ensure safe delivery of Sophie's goods aboard our ship. He's, he's intending to try to keep his good okay. faith towards his family. Gotta help your uh, stepmother. Sophie. Sophie? Yeah, of course. Of course, you have to refer to her. I don't, you don't use the title of her Adult intention. first name, of course, of course. Of course, of course. <laughs> you are still on Find Your Mother Difficulty 18? Yes. <laughs> We're going to jump over to Quentin next. Quentin, based on some of the events that have happened specifically several events that happened in the last episode mm. i am changing find high Texionic academy from six to ten Ooh, okay things got harder uh, choices well, were made yeah <laughs> phrasing was <Absolutely>. used <laughs> yeah, yeah. you can always change that if you want to and uh i don't have a short-term goal for you so Okay. Well, short-term goal is to try to repair uh, some some damage that was done, and uh, see if he can reassure Iona uh, about the current situation she's in, and you know, their their working relationship. <laughs> Recover that working relationship. Got it. Got it. I had forgotten about that. <laughs> oh, you mean so when bad. you <laughs> tried to get her after you openly admitted to stealing object hot objects didn't say i stole it but it, it did it, yeah it did indicate that it what may have been stolen Very there was so a lot agreed. listen there was some extremely suspicious talking around the absolutely point. absolutely there was, there was no like look this accidentally Poorly fell into our out, hands out it's you know <laughs> we think it might be stolen do you know what it's done no it was mm -hmm. like we've got a hot item absolutely and... It was very poorly done. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, I, I have no goals for you right now. What do you, what do you got for me? So for the short term goal that I have listed right now is to talk to both crewmates about their families. That is super interesting. Uh, for the long term goal, because I shoot for big long term goals, I guess. Uh, I, as the first step to trying to rebuild the order, want to try to figure out how to start an organization for relief and charity.
I am going to set this goal at a three. I'm on to Kane's strategy. Goals that are achievable and just power level past me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, with the idea of eventually rebuilding a, the, um, a, an Imago Day order. Yeah. That's, <laughs> but that's not that's not the goal that you've set. You've set an no. incredibly achievable goal that requires... Landmark goals. <laughs> that, that requires paperwork and money. Uh, yeah. <laughs> One of which I have none of. <laughs> Hardly even an adventuring goal, I would say. But it's interesting, so I'll let it ride because I want to see where it goes. Um, the crew, what is your goal as a crew? I know there was some hotly contested debate. The issue of the pen remains superfluous. The pen that was taken apart and hopefully put together again correctly. <laughs> without clicking it yeah i was yeah. gonna say the very specific thing you refused to do was click it that's true i really wanted you to i'll be honest <laughs> I... listen all you have to say you just could joke and say, maybe you click it and you'd be like okay <laughs> but i think uh i had proposed our goal of quentin to find what the device is but mm understanding more of the why like why does it exist and how would it be used especially by jace so, oh yeah. on the question of the pen so for the meta psionics and mind tracing with what i saw like do i know the power or like what effect it would be yeah. at least related to you would need to make a sci tech role of some kind in order to okay, okay. that a skill i don't think you have <laughs> that's because it's a it it is a skill beyond what is on the current skill list. You would need to find a specialist or essentially redevelop the ability to make psionic technology, which has been lost. Yeah, the next long term goal someday. Uh, <laughs> but what is the crew goal here? I wow. think three guys uh, just kind of looking at their screen. Uh, I think I, <laughs> I I was thinking something along the lines of seeing what else we can learn about the pen mm -hmm. and determine what we think is the likely use that this guy's going to make so that we can make our moral decision on whether or not we're going to screw ourselves financially <laughs> and deliver this thing to this guy. <laughs> yeah, I think Quentin's Quentin's definitely thinking mostly around like how deep of shit might they be in if people like connect them to this thing. So basically like is it a weapon? Is it you know, something deeply dangerous and or what does Jace know uh, about it or its relation to Johnson? Basically, like those three things, answers to any of those questions are, are of interest uh, in my book. Can I throw down, find out more about this job in general? Yeah. Because you have so many specifics. Yeah, we, we need a simple I like that goal. generalization. Find That's beautiful. Out more Simplified. about the job. <laughs> Answer all the questions yeah. we didn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> Learn. So at this point, Johnson is literally it's just good. a name to us, right? That this guy yeah. muttered, are you with Johnson? We yeah, don't know anything else other than that. We have, sure. we have no context or way to know. I mean, even the at least not at this point. players barely know anything about Johnson. Exactly. They know that I Johnson do know does he... paperwork and he works for something called the Perimeter Agency. And he's a yeah. fan of Anvi. <laughs> no, well, that's I didn't... true. I was uh, Minerva wasn't there to hear a conversation about the perimeter agency. I only right. only the players. That, that was the player the side thing. Perimeters. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. because when when he said Johnson, I was like, wait, that name sounds familiar. And I was like, why can't I find it in my notes? Oh, right, because it was a player thing, not a <laughs> character thing. Uh, when you come out of drill space, are you broadcasting your ship signal? This is not required, but it's usually considered good form to do so. No one will get angry if you don't do it, but you won't be able to like land on a planet or dock with a government facility like a space station without someone being able to track you on the way in. Mostly people do it because they, they're sovereign citizen types or because they're pirates and they're trying to sneak through the system. Uh, some people just do it because they don't feel like everyone has to know who they are and where they are at all times, right? They just value their privacy to some extent. Um, but without it, if you go off course, if you go on an emergency, if something breaks, no one will know where you are. Um, 
That's that if you do use it, everyone will know exactly who you are and where you are at all times. That sounds like a decision for the captain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'd say by default, we probably, you know, follow the standards in okay. our, our broadcasting as we come out, unless, you know. Uh, do captain, you sir, run the- sensor sweeps <laughs> when you drop out of drill space? I feel like that's a prudent thing to do. Make it sure would, we're not it would be, to be a in. little unusual to consistently, because so the thing is, when you run a sensor sweep, just like turning on your beacon, everyone will know that you're doing it. Mm. You are basically saying, hey, I think someone's something or someone is hiding out here. This is specifically because you have the advanced sensors package on your ship to find lost or hidden things. So if someone is out there and they're a pirate and you ping them, everyone in the system is going to go, oh, oh, there's something out there. Those guys just got a ping on something. And then that pirate or whoever's out there is going to go, hmm, shit, this motherfucker, he just he just bursted on me. You just bursted <laughs> some electromagnetic energy on me? You got some okay. radio waves? We go MechWarrior 4 passive sensors mode. As, so you typically one ping, United States one Navy. ping right. only. <laughs> That's the Russians. They went active. Ping. Okay, look, no, too complicated. You don't have to do it. Typically, you would use just, just standard policy would be to only use it in very directed sweeps, like at an object that you thought you wanted to know more about, or if you're a ruins looker or someone entering a new star system for the first time, you would do an extremely detailed one. It's not unusual for people to do it, but again, you will upset probably a few people, and you will Mm. definitely let everyone know you're there. I mean, I I think on the flip to that, Minerva kind of sees through the ship. So it's not like you're in a windowless space with something going to be right next to wherever we came out of drill space. Minerva should be able to see things that are nearby without doing a, a sensor sweep. Yeah, I mean, you're going to be pulling in passive, you know, all all spectrum bands will be coming towards you, and you'll be receiving anybody else's beacons, right? You'll get all of their ship information that they're sending to you at all times, just like black boxes on airplanes and ships. Yeah. Yeah, you won't be that's... blind, but it it should be noted again what you, what you can do with the sensor sweep is a very active, very powerful, and it will give you a complete breakdown of everything that's happening. And it clearly identifies us as the one setting up the. Yes, you said like directed ones would be cool. You can you can uh, direct it. Yes, you can essentially okay, like okay. narrow your beam rather so, than just being every direction. Standing policy, maybe like we ask Minerva to do a risk analysis when we come in a system and do some directed ones or like look at like interesting objects that, uh, you know, from from the data, the charts that she's seeing are, are worth looking at. Something like that, right? Like, OK. Yeah, festival. do something that's a, a little less blanket and a little <laughs> more just like check our blind spots, see what's mm-hmm. right next to us. If there's an object in space close by, just a quick check. Bottom yeah. left hand corner. Complete black screen, typewriter noises, 9.29 a.m., January 13th. Lametrod system arrival point 0504. There's nothing but a galaxy star field in the background, and then out of nowhere, there's something. The LAS Golden Goose, a, a wave of steam rising off it inexplicably, the water vapor dissipates very quickly out into the space of nothingness as the ship begins broadcasting its beacon. You find yourself quite close to Bula 9, a Banerjee 9 series space station, uh, which acts as the arrival point. It has a refueling. uh, It looks like it's got about 30,000 people on board. There are a lot fewer ships in this system than there were back in mid appeal um there's probably only about 20 ships out here one of them is some sort of bulk cruiser that's hauling ocarillion meta wheat um most of them appear to be some form of planetary defense or government shuttles you do also find a number of 20th century chemical rockets which don't technically qualify as ships 
it looks like there's hobbyists between the two planets here who enter orbits and then home and transfer between the two uh in, in like solar sailing ships or like solid and liquid fuel chemical rockets uh hall effect thrusters it seems like it's, it's pretty weird i mean some of these are much much larger than your ship like your ship is only about 100 meters long it's not like the biggest ship in the world these things had to be truly massive for the you know the real dum-dums back in the 20th century to get up into space <laughs> it also tells you quite a bit about the technology level of this system that that appears to be the primary interplanetary transport. You also receive a uh, free from the exchange satellite a newspaper, which I'm going to send to you on Discord right now. I'm also going to give it to the audience that's live with us. And I'm going to put it in uh, our open Discord channel. SWN Shipbreakers and pin it so if you need to find it it starts with that number is newspaper too you want to take a quick look over that it's got some interesting announcements done as always by James Jives the VI who's the host with the most uh that's, that's good which part? Which part are you enjoying? <laughs> I mean, the very juvenile joke. The jack-offing? <laughs> yes, <Okay>. absolutely. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> Out of control, as officials are helpless. <laughs> so good. <laughs> I wish I could take credit for that, but that was Jesse Cox that wrote that joke, so. It's, it's funny either way. <laughs> yeah, the nefarious acts of the jack crackers. Uh seem to be present okay it lends a somewhat sinister edge to those slow chemical rockets orbiting around the planets any one of them could be a jack cracker trying to jack off you gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> we just lost the, the entire uh... female audience <laughs> <laughs> oh shit but the rest of the audience is chuckling <laughs> <laughs> uh hmm. yeah what do you guys want to do when you arrive here uh question van v do you prefer to do you like to be in the cockpit when we come out of drill hmm. yeah i think i think uh i mean i'm trying to think how long will we piloted together now probably like a month or so if, if yeah. i have that time all right so i feel like we have a routine but whether or not there's a complete comfort level with van v of having it all be like automated without a physical like if your armature's not there he's probably less trusting <laughs> and so trusting is probably not the right word but he just likes to overview and make sure everything is the way it should be like no surprises okay. so you're in the cockpit when we'll uh oh, yeah. teleport into the cockpit like right before <laughs> Essentially, like a cup of coffee. <laughs> Scare the crap out of Van V. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Especially if I'd be like, oh, Captain, it looks like everything. Oh, Jesus Christ. How are we doing? <laughs> uh, the armature's totally not on the bridge. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm definitely checking everything. Even though I know you can still. What is the 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 hologram that that Minerva chooses? Is it like a bust shot, like you know, just like the top of the head with the the shoulders and neck type thing? Is it like you know the full three like little tiny full model? Full model or... I like the idea of the miniature full body thing yeah, that just okay. stands there and like turns to face stuff. <laughs> I like it. Like a mini Cortana, basically. Mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> I imagined because you mentioned Andromeda as being it. It was she was like the same throughout most of the show and then the actress was pregnant briefly and they just started doing like w like above the waist shot like very specific shots <laughs> to not show that she i think they even worked it into the show that like the ship got pregnant I, I don't really remember a lot about it it was kevin sorbo so there was some weird <laughs> shit going on <laughs> Anyway, I always assumed it was like that. Like it was just like, ah, I'm a, okay. I'm a talking holographic interface. So you get you get this shot. That's it. But you know what? 
You tell me. <laughs> what do you How, guys? So, and I think in order to accommodate Van V's apparent uh, phobia of interacting without the armature, I think uh, the hologram won't appear in the room with Van V unless interacting directly with the captain. Otherwise, probably just coming in his voice over the like over speakers. That probably would be better because then he can imagine it's like just someone talking into an intercom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Minerva might not understand, but Minerva can choose not to antagonize you. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think yeah, Van V's in the cockpit checking checking all the panels and stuff. And I guess the first the first two things he'd be trying to figure out is uh a distance to Astopel, which is where Jace is. And I, I can't remember where Sophie's stuff supposed to be delivered because that wasn't. I don't think uh, Bambi was there. It's, it's to basically the space station in orbit, Bula 9. Bula That's 9. quite close okay. to you. Okay. Uh, uh, so no transit question. to Bula okay. 9 is inter region, and transit to uh, Astapel is inter system. So Bula 9 probably makes more sense. Yeah, definitely going to drop off the goods, get that done before anything complicated happens, uh, I think is is the move. And mid tra mid or traveling to Bula 9 and then Astapel gives us time to discuss in transit what the hell we want to do about the pen and chase. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So let's see here. I'm pulling up starships to see <clears throat> transit times. I imagine Van V is trying to, uh, there's no way to do it sneakily because whenever sees everything, but trying to figure out what is the, uh, combat armor rule on bullet. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can yeah, probably look. look that up for you. See, like what? you go to do a search and you're partway type through and the results are already popping up. <laughs> <laughs> Things not to do on Bula 9. Uh, Bula 9 is a open trade station. It is not associated with either of the planets. Uh, it is a privately held concern. It's one of those an Opticon. If you if you fuck around, you'll find out. But you are freely allowed to use armor, weapons, drugs, uh quietly slaves that sort of thing would all pass through a system like this no surprise given that it's located right next door to the full-on piracy system of mm -hmm. the wormhole or sorry mm -hmm. the black hole on. Let's, <laughs> no, let's say something like uh most things are legal there will be there is very limited law enforcement support <laughs> Oh no, Most... I should be very clear. Law enforcement on the station is extremely diligent. Uh it is it should be noted, however, that capital punishment is freely practiced. Mm -hmm. So right. now it's free range, it's... just don't cross the line. Again, it is FAFO. Fuck around and find out for sure. <laughs> so most things, you know, are okay legal. Just don't get caught. And this time, I mean it, Van V, don't get caught. <laughs> That's what shows up on the screen. Uh, it'll take you six hours to get to the space station, which will put you into the afternoon, and then it's 48 hours to go to uh, the planet Astapel. So, so right. no, you go ahead. You go ahead. I was just going to say, we, to, it, it's been essentially nine days total that has occurred, if, I'm, if my count's correct. Uh, are you checking your person days of, of oxygen spent? Uh, well, counting supply usage for sure. Yeah. yeah. And just 26 keep, keep person checking. days per arrival in this system is right. my count. Okay. Yeah. I've got the supply use tracked. Just was trying to go by like my actual say two, three person, two days, four person, two days. And then the jump transit is four person for three days, which should be 26 person days yep. out of 180 total. Uh, would you like to refuel there? Because okay. that will take more time. But that's um, very, extremely reasonable to keep topped up. Yeah, uh, you also it, are down spike time. fuel, which will take its own yeah. separate refueling. 
Um, you have, I believe you have a bunker that will allow you to jump twice without refueling, but the whole point of Correct. having the second point is that if you jump badly, you can get back. Yeah, okay. Captain, I, w I would advise we, uh, we don't know what we're getting into on Astapel. It might be wise to just top ourselves off on Bula 9, you know? Absolutely. Agreed. Let's get it done. We wipe. You are uh, approaching Bula 9. Bula 9 control doesn't even send an audio message. Uh, it seems like their out, their like data out cap has been hit. And they're only sending text form messages with only the most base level of encryption. Uh, indicating that uh, station power is down in your docking bay and that you will need, your pilot will need to manually attach to the docking arm. Oh. Uh, as a result, they are only going to charge you half normal rates for your docking bay until power is restored to your section. Well, Quentin uh, claps uh, Van V on the shoulder there and says, what do you think? You got, you got this? I think between Minerva and I, we can we can tackle this pretty easily. I mean, she's got eyes everywhere. All right. Is this there is... a role that I could make to uh, like provide um, to help provide data to help him? I don't think line it even up? needs to be a role. I'll just let him take a plus one on a piloting check. You need to hit a six. I can easily see this going into like a. Uh... Van V, you're going too fast. Slow down. I will break for you. <laughs> uh, you. You know, like when you get the back of Karen fancy cars and they put the dashed lines on the ground in the camera I mean, view? My Honda CRV <laughs> will consistently be like, break, break. And I'm like, why am I breaking? There's nothing in front of me. And it'll uh, actually run the brake on me. Uh, very wait, annoying. Strength of piloting? Ah, oh, crap. I always forget I mean, to change that thing. I mean, you I mean, easily you beat a six it. without the strength. Um... <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> and only would add This is no sweat. I mean, this is literally the most basic check that you could do docking in space at ultra slow speed. You quickly uh you know, get in there, do a counter burn, retrograde burn, I said I should say for all of our rocket scientists <clears throat> out there. Nudge with some thrusters close to the docking arm, get yourself locked in. And then uh, from there, someone has to go inside and use like garage door chains in order to pull the docking arm oh, in Lord. and get the ship hoisted into position so it can attach the hoses. <laughs> um, the docking bay closes. You've been pretty pampered so far with like private docking bays. Uh, this time, like a tech just comes <clears throat> out wearing a breathing mask. But, like, not a spacesuit. He'd be okay for, like, 30 seconds if he got blasted out into space. Uh, he's got on a blue hat that just says, the trucking's good. Um, and, like, uh, jean overalls and a wife beater. And he's just, just waves at you at the back of... Uh, at, at Sorry, not the back of your ship. Like, the middle of your ship where the elevator comes down. And he's got a clipboard. He's just like... Rubbing the back of his neck, looking around, just waiting for someone to come down to talk to him. Is is this the guy to talk to to like fill us up on stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this, I'm, I'm this picturing is like this is like a barotrauma gas station. <laughs> is it, this is a gas station <laughs> attendant? Yes, perfect. Gotcha. Right, Captain, well, you want you want me to go take care of this? Please do. All right, I'll totally go down there and see this guy. <clears throat> okay, if you can get a good. Oh well. I'll, I'll send the I'll send the armature along. This is uh well the timestamp was what nine twenty nine now it's six it's hours like, later or by something. By the time you get locked in there, it's about five p.m. Five p.m. Damn. Yeah, you know you have to uh, slow down, uh, dock, <clears throat> traffic, all that. Yeah. Not Afternoon, sir. How you How you doing? Hey, how you doing there? Name's Jimbo. What's your name, sir? Jimbo, my, my name's Van V. Van, Van V, Van it's a good yeah. name, solid name. All right, so uh, I got here. We're actually offering a uh, a discount sale here on this particular docking bay. We're only going to be charging you 50 credits a day. How long can I get you locked in here for? Well, let's see. Uh, 
we we have a delivery to make and then we're looking to uh you know get a little topped off you know what i'm saying so if you could you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah how long you. it would take to top us off i'd say Food, not water, too much oxygen, longer than heat that. sinks yep you need uh any of that spike fuel yes sir you you know it all right that's uh 500 a pop how much uh you know how much of the other goods do you need to get going i would i would imagine i got a list from <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah we need uh let's see five total total units of supply that's that's like five times uh six people essentially worth if you're doing that uh, yeah i just don't remember how much a person day is you need 26 person days worth i think that the the starship generator i don't know if anyone has it open but that page should tell how much each costs we go to the, the Discord, bookmarks because that's where the pin is yeah I do have the. I've got the PDF open. I just it was on the wrong page. Yeah, I just don't know where that particular. Uh, it's oh, sorry, it's types. rebooter where the stats are at. Um, I, I do have it open. I, I just can't say I spend a ton of time with it. <laughs> yeah. Fuel load is five hundred a day. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so we need one load of fuel to top up, and then supplies. I don't see how much the supplies cost a day. There definitely is 100% of costs. I just can't find it. So, Jimbo, you're, what you're too. telling me is it's on the house today, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> just because the GM is bad at figuring out where this is. Maintenance and repair. Is bad. Here it goes. It's 20 a day, which sounds that sounds right to me. There we um, go. It's on page 94 of the book. So, you need 20 a day at... 26 Six person days. days for 520 plus 500 for the fuel plus 50 for uh the docking bay is 1070 you want to tip jimbo in the process <clears throat> yeah i think i tip jimbo and i'm assuming because we already have a discount these prices are not negotiable. Uh, just the docking bay is discounted everything else is pretty standardized mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I imagine you can't negotiate on that stuff too much. It's, so, you know, it's like a really basic staple item. Inflation yeah, is based yeah. off of the cost of those things sort of deal. Gotcha. Well, then, yeah, let's tip. tip what's a normal tip for this guy? Like, if I give him 1100 we feel shortchanged. No, 30, 30 credits would be a pretty good tip. He, he probably gets paid <clears> about 100 a day. Oh, wow. Uh, so okay. 30 would be a huge tip for him. Yeah. But whole... on the other hand, for starship captains, thirty is like nothing, right? In order right. to run a ship, it costs thousands and thousands. So, yeah, you tip him thirty. He says, "Thank you, sir. You know what? I'm gonna put you guys number one in my priority list here." Um, so he Ooh, like whistles, and two uh, like very tiny droids roll out and then deploy themselves. They they turn they go from being balls like. Uh, Metroid balls into huge centipede-like creatures made up of like ridged uh, accordion sections, and it it they like each grab a tube, one for uh, like water and one for starship fuel, and and attach it, and then they both roll away and begin pushing huge crates of like oxygen canisters and food onto your elevator uh yeah he just kind of stands there and shoots the shit with van v for a minute if you're willing to talk about blast ball oh my god yeah yeah well the two of them are talking anybody else got anything going on i feel like while the armature is just like woo okay um i guess i'll listen to blast ball (laughs) so they're talking about cunningham versus cunnington uh it's been almost two years but it's gonna be a huge matchup between the two top you know leaders of their teams i think i I totally had a a player forget moment i made it a point in my break out here to say make sure to introduce minerva and then jimbo started talking and that thought went immediately away (laughs) so (laughs) minerva is just observing (laughs) I mean, just to be clear, these these drones are going to push the stuff onto your elevator, and once it's on your ship, it's up to you guys to like move it and load it, right? Yeah. Nobody we, sets we, foot on your ship without permission. 
Okay. I mean, Minerva will make appropriate dramatic gestures to pretend to type stuff on <laughs> on the pad, and then just automate the lift and have the little working drones on the ship move stuff around and yep. organize it. <clears throat> I have um, committed a point for split processing for that. Good, works well. Works well. So I, I would try to figure out from uh, from Jimbo where ex well. I know, so we have to deliver Sophie's stuff, but I'd figure out the easiest way to get to wherever that destination yeah, is. Yeah, you basically, he, he talks you through the process since you haven't done it before, and he, you know, he may not have done it, but he's seen people do it. He's just like, hey, listen, but it's real easy. That company you're talking about, uh, you know, the construction one, yep. they got a little, you know, thing in orbit of the station. It's just like a little beacon, couple hundred meters out. You just head out there, you park yourself, you, you call first so that they know to send somebody out there. You open your cargo bays, they come in and pull out what's needed, or you push it out the door, they grab it. Everybody handshakes, the two commanders sign transit papers of uh, ownership and authority, and bing, bam, boom, you're done. Just, just do it all in zero G so that there's no real heavy lift in there, you know, beyond the mass, of course. You know that that is brilliant. I gotta say that is. Yeah, that we've is... been doing it that way for like seven, eight, nine hundred years. It's uh, it's pretty tried and true process. <laughs> I appreciate you attributing that it's brilliant, but uh, it's just really basic stuff. Well, Jimbo, I appreciate your honesty. <laughs> hey, look, man. Let me tell you something. Less than one percent of one percent of humanity is ever gonna make it into space. You know. I'm a gas station attendant at a space station that, frankly, it could break at any moment. I'm just going to be honest here. I could be sucked into space at any time. I have a breathing mask on right now. I think it's crazy that you're out here talking to me without a spacesuit on. Uh, but you know, let me say this, you know, everyone that makes it up here, no one ever wants to go back down. You know, once you get up here... Everything changes. Even if I never leave this system, I'm seeing something that 99 of 99 are never going to see. And I'm going to do, I'm going to do things that maybe plenty of other people have done, but I'm going to talk to people like you. You know, I, I like your outlook trying to look for that glass half full, but, uh, you, no, you raise a good point. The glass is holy full, man. Mm, I don't know. Your whole Life attitude it could break at any second. I, I have a fulfilling career, you know? Well, that's good. I, I'm glad I you feel fulfilled. I would say that this isn't hard work. It's honest work. I feel tired at the end of the day, but it feels good. And I'm keeping the I'm keeping the wheels moving, man. You know, not everybody gets to be the CEO. Somebody's got to grease those wheels. You know, there's nothing wrong with being a cog in a literal machine. Well, I hear that. <clears throat> well, hey, you right. know. I, sorry, I got another doc coming in right now. He taps like a Bluetooth headset. <laughs> and he's just like, I, I gotta go. So so great to meet you, Mr. Van V. And uh, good luck with your delivery. I hope that you make an excellent deal and that you aren't ambushed by pirates. All right. Uh, you know, he heads over to the service door. The two droids are just continuing to move things in and out, exchanging spent heat, uh, you know, heat sinks. Well, all right. I, I'll. I'm probably like saying, "See you later, Jim Buzz." He's already gone. But. He shoots you his <laughs> comlink number just in case you want to like get a drink on the station or anything. Ooh, wow! All right then. He literally <laughs> just turns. It's like, um, you know, when you have your keys and you're like, "Lock my car." I'm walking away from my car. Lock my car. He just <clears> turns <throat> with his pad and he just shoots you his number. It shows up as a text message. All right, made, you know, like, made a friend. This person of context. There you go. <laughs> Cool. I think ever since he said uh, you're not in a spacesuit, and Van V looks around and goes, "Yeah, we don't even have power here." Probably, he raises a good point. <laughs> go back to the elevator and shoot back up. <laughs> How long do we have now in terms of like refueling? And it's probably going to take about two to three hours to refuel. Captain. Uh... I'm not sure who the right individual is for this, but should someone perhaps see if, uh, what's her name? Lono? Yono. Uh, Yono. Yono. Oh, you know, this is the last e. time too. Yep. It, it, <laughs> it underlines it. So it looks like an L in my thing. Um, 
But should should someone go see if she needs anything while we're docked? Or hell, maybe she even wants to get off the ship. I, I, we stop here. We cut to black and white. <laughs> it is first one screen, then it split screens, then it quad screens. It's the exact same scene every day. Iono Kanto wakes up promptly at 5.50 a.m. He has a shower. She gets out. She looks at the mirror. She says the same phrase about putting your scrunchie on when things get hard, because that's what the royal princess does. She puts on the very similar clothing. She works at her computer. She continuously requests updates from Minerva about her technology, and she talks to herself for about 12 hours a day. Just no idea that Minerva is creeping on her at all times. Just oh, man. bouncing a ball off of the wall, working through her personal struggles, her contact with her parents, working through where is she going to work after this? Like, she's got to <laughs> go back to work with uh, Finana, but she doesn't know where she's going to get assigned. And she's going to have a doctorate, theoretically, if this is all successful, in a field that has little to no value to Fanana. So Fanana must have sponsored her there her for some reason for a foreign exchange uh program. And she just cannot figure out where she's gonna end up. She, you know, she doesn't want to get stuck planet side now that you know she's got a doctorate and she's probably gonna be making quite a bit of money. Uh she wants to do like academic xenology. Um it's just, uh, she seems like maybe she has a crush on the Indiana Jones XP guy. She, she nice. keeps checking her communicator when she gets in system to see if he's also in system. Uh, <laughs> she's looking up information continuously about someone named Dr. Tiberius Cron and seeing if there's any historical... So she was basically going through the ship's records of Tiberius Kron, because you guys have been places other than um, Midipile. And now that she's arrived, she's looking for Tiberius Kron in the local system as well. And that, um, the Indiana Jones character is Billy Brighton. She's just checking to see if he is in system. So you mentioned, like, hey, you know, we should check on her or whatever, and Minerva says, um, uh, I, of course, am going to respect her privacy, but I will say that she has um, she has been keeping herself busy, and I've been making sure that she has what she needs. Awesome. How do you know that if you're respecting her privacy? I'm respecting it by not divulging anything to you. Well, that, that feels just a, a tidbit hypocritical. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Don't think too hard on it, man. Be Minerva means well. <laughs> uh, you know, I haven't been meaning to to at least try to touch base myself. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a few days. Things have maybe calmed down. Very least, try to reassure that uh, you know we're we're not. I don't know whatever she thinks we are. Do you know what she thinks we are? Anything that I have observed is her privacy. It's just, just fair enough. No. But I would I mean, recommend so that you be very particular. All of the cabins can like check the, the ship's current location at any time and mm -hmm. like, you know, like count down to arrival to the next destination. Since in a ship, no matter what you do, you're always going somewhere unless you're docked. Right? <laughs> Even if you're orbiting, you're orbiting something. What Without I would divulging say is... anything, can you tell us anything that she may be looking for? Anything we can, she, she needs while we're on a station? Um, she has been concerned about her research and been requesting access to information about her, uh, her hardware, which I have given her. Just to double check on the hardware. We are supposed to essentially, when we go to the black hole, that's where we're supposed to use this thing. Is that correct? You were supposed to use it very shortly, less than a second before you come right. out of drill space at the black hole. Right. Okay. Okay. Cool. 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 So, so whatever it sounds like that she sounds like there's nothing we can really provide her while we're on, uh, Bula nine here. 
If I can certainly make an inquiry, or Captain, if you wish to try to speak with her. Yeah, let's see if she's willing to give five minutes. You know, if nothing else, we'll give her the itinerary, what we're doing. We'll give her a few options of where we can drop her off after we get this done, what what we're going to be doing. I don't know. We'll, we'll see where she's at. I would recommend being direct. Yeah. You know, I'm not very good at... What's what's the indirect? Yes, I would recommend being direct and deliberate. Just say yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would recommend being uh, direct and and be very purposeful in the words you choose. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Well, here's a quick cross your fingers. I'll do my best. You got this, Cap. And I slap you on the back. <laughs> <laughs> Louis. Louis. Louis shows up. I need you for this one, buddy. <laughs> Can't help but think. He's not that sure he... whether you want to ride him to the door or not. <laughs> you know, it's only a few. It's only a few dozen feet, but it's hard. You know, he's he's a capybara. He doesn't know whether <laughs> when you call Louis, Louis, you're like, oh, we're leaving the ship, or we're gonna walk. Yeah, no, we're, we're just gonna go for the walk. Quentin okay. will keep the the hand on his his flank. All right. Scritch, scritch, scritch as he goes, you yeah. know, cool, he calming goes, himself yeah. down. Yep. Breathing. He'll get there and he'll, he'll give a, you know, light little tap, tap, tap. You hear, ouch, the sound of something <laughs> falling. The door opens and what is clearly a card pyramid is all over the floor. The bed is not only unmade, but like the sheet is artfully uh, almost TV set, college student dorm room draped half over the floor, half over the bed. The pillow is just like seated in the center of the room. Um, she's used like holographic chalkboards to put writing on the ceiling, writing on all the walls. You know, it looks awful to you, but you're like, oh, she could just wipe that with the flick of a hand, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, she's just there in shorts that say juicy on the back and a t-shirt and just says, oh, yeah, hi. Hey, uh, no, glad, glad you're making yourself comfortable. Um, you got a minute to talk, just like a, a few minutes. Yeah, we can talk just right to touch base. Yeah. All right, no, fair, fair enough. He's scratching Louie. Getting a little nervous. We're just and, uh, to look up at you. <laughs> when makes eye contact, he's like, "Oh, no, okay, all right." All right. So he blinks real slowly, and then he makes eye contact with Yona. Just kind she of look? warmly <laughs> stares at her. Okay. She like looks down at him, and then she looks at you. Look, I, you know, look, I am. Do I put this? I, I am a little bit dumb and don't know how to speak correctly sometimes. So I feel like I've given you really the wrong idea and, and kind of freaked you out. I just wanted to see if I could clear things up a little bit and just explain what I tried to ask you before, if that's all right. Okay. I'll give you a shot. All right. So, I mean, first off, we we are salvagers and explorers by trade and by goal. We would like to discover things and, you know, like help people uh, just bring new technology back to the, the sector. That's that's our main goal in, in general. So just to put that out there, we took a legitimate job off the exchange. We're pretty new at this. I'm pretty new at this. In retrospect, it paid a suspiciously high amount of money and things went weird. And yeah, we we, we wound up with this item that is definitely stolen. And uh, it freaks me out. I'm not, I don't know what to do. And I, and I panicked. So, you know, you being the only person anywhere nearby that might be able to explain what this thing was and how much trouble I, I might've gotten us all in. Not you, just, you know, the crew. Did you steal this? this item? It, yeah, it was it, that we did. We did that. Yep, that was okay. us. It was a legitimate job off the exchange. And uh, I'll be honest, I didn't know what to do. We, our reputation was on the line. And we were very new at this. Like, we, I didn't think we could just 
turn a job down. It was billed as a courier job. Again, in retrospect, suspiciously high pay. So uh, that's entirely on me. But like, I'll be honest, I've been walking around for the last couple of years with my head essentially Swiss cheese, uh, half remembered things. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that that's an excuse, but it is weird. Uh, it's like the, the holes in the, in the cheese are filled back in. It's, it's kind of like I'm remembering everything. And, uh, that seems to be kind of related to you. I walked into a room. I want to be like super clear while you're talking. She has taken her left hand and is transcribing the notes of what you're saying on the wall facing you so you can't see it. Okay, okay. And he, he um, oh no, shoot, what was I saying? Uh, he... Swiss cheese, holes being yeah. filled in. <laughs> well, let me, what do you want from me? At this point, nothing. Look, I wanted, I, I was, like I said, I was panicking. I needed to figure out how much trouble I might have gotten us in by making a dumb decision. We're going to, Cup it. We're going to get rid of this thing and we're going to be done with it. And we're going to go on to our actual job where we've got a salvage job that's out in 0501 and ad meets. That's after we get to the black hole where we're going to be. I mean, all right, we're going to be competing with uh, Billy Brighton there for a treasure map, basically. If you must know, <laughs> that's our goal to go there. Okay. I mean, but that's after that, we're heading to ad meets. That's what the professor told me you were going for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, that's our itinerary. After that, whatever we can do, you know, to help you, we're going to help you out with your research. We hope that it helps us out because there's going to be some fantastic data, hopefully, that comes out of it. But like I said, like I, I walked into a room and you had my face like in the middle of what looked like a conspiracy board. And I gave you the benefit of the doubt on that one. I just, just asking you to give us the, the benefit of the doubt here. Right now. I, absolutely. You know what? Hey, that's fair. That's fair. No, and I appreciate that because, um, yeah, like, I, I'm sorry <laughs> for freaking you out. Uh, hopefully this is some sort of explanation that makes it a little bit more clear that, uh, I don't know. Look, I'm new at making decisions for myself. My life on Lita was planned, and I didn't have to do anything for that it was just laid out in front of me this is yeah making your own choices is hard turns out i think that you could either are you attempting to be deceitful me yeah knowing your character i don't think so but i just want to make sure no no i'm not sure i would call this you attempting to charm her in this case i think you're trying to persuade her okay I would ask that you make a talk check with wisdom. Okay. Talk with wisdom. Could I argue for uh, connect since I met her through connect? I think that only applies to the person that you okay. summoned via connect. Okay. That's fair. How about lead? Because she's on the ship. I would allow you to do lead if you were okay. also convincing her to cut her in on a portion of the job to identify the pen. Oh. Mm. Otherwise, she's she... not a member of your crew. Yeah, no, that's fair. I mean, she hasn't shown interest in the job, and I wouldn't want to push her I mean, her if you say, the... I will give you $5,000 to look at this pen, you will have, you're suddenly having a different conversation. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it does mm. say that lead is used to convince people to do things that they otherwise wouldn't want to do, and you're not asking her to do anything. That's true. So. That's true. This is mostly just... I know you're uh, skill shopping, and I appreciate the hustle. Yeah. <laughs> I'm giving you the options that will allow you to use those things. Connect totally off the board. You could that's, connect no, that... with Professor Sporadicus if he was here. <laughs> That's fair. Maybe um, you could try to pull an angle where you try to convince her that maybe her expertise could help you figure out the best way to to get out of the mess you accidentally found yourself in. See if she'd help you by looking at it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's probably my best bet in terms of getting any kind of bonus here. So uh, he will, Quentin yeah, will throw out there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Quentin will throw out there. Look, like, like I said, I'm just, I just want to make sure we're, we get out of this mess and get back to our normal legitimate life. Like we got paid a hefty sum for this. If you're at all interested in helping us out, I can cut you in on some of that. What are we talking? 
like 10%, like 2K. How about that? Make that leadership check. <laughs> She's a college student. Just offer pizza. You <laughs> have been offering her pizza every six hours and a salad. That's true. That was the exact thing she demanded. There we go. An eight. Right. Okay. She says, all right. Yeah. For 2,000 credits, I will take a cursory exterior look at this device that in no way tampers with stolen property. That okay. is fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. And fantastic. I'm going to go put more appropriate clothes on. She yeah, shuts the door. Right. And she's still standing there. Shuts the door in your face. <laughs> uh, she comes back out about three minutes later, wearing a industrial clean suit, and heads down to the cargo bay to gather up some of her tools and equipment that she uses to work on the probe, uh, and asks you to bring the object to her in the cargo bay. Well, um, I guess. Maybe Minerva walks in with it at that point. You want to send Minerva with Minerva. the device? Yeah, I'll right, yeah. page Minerva for it. Uh, the armature will go and collect the device and you bring it down to, to the cargo bay. A six or higher on this. Oh, she got an 11. Okay. So uh, just for reference, you rolled so high on this. It's higher. Her total bonus is higher than a 13, which is basically like legendary godlike level. Damn. Um. So... She can't tell you everything about the object because she's not taking it apart. But she says, oh, yeah, yeah. After a few minutes of working with it, I think I... So, look, there were always these rumors about the Terran Mandate that they, you know, they have this very weird technology that doesn't make sense to humans, right? They... I don't know whether it was designed by insane psychics. Some people said it was designed by, like, AI. Um, but, like, super Architect. weird stuff, essentially. And I feel like he, somewhere in the quantum core, Minerva's eyes are just going back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... I think that this is a communications device that operates on SciTech. Uh, you know, I'm, again, I'm not touching it in any way. I'm not activating it. I'm pretty sure that this thing is an open link on both sides. Like right so, now? Yeah, like someone could be listening into what we're saying right now. Okay. Well, shit. Um, Let's get this thing isolated and then off the I ship. I don't think it soon. can be. It okay. operates on a higher dimension. Okay, she takes out a board. She takes out a holographic board and splashes it on the floor, essentially. And she draws a stick figure of a young girl and a a, a box with an open hinge. Uh, and then she draws a key in the girl's hand and says, all right, so this is how my professor explained it to me. This is Alice. Say hello to Alice. Hello, Alice. Okay, so Alice wants to keep her keys safe from anybody. This safe, from her perspective, is perfectly secure and safe. And then she, like, takes the key and drags the object Photoshop style into the safe. And then, again, hinges the door shut on the floor. So now the key is in the safe. And she says, from Alice's point of view, the safe is impossible to crack into. Most secure vault on her two-dimensional plane. You following me so far? She Thanks, reaches son. down, picks up the hologram of the key and holds it in the air. And then with her left hand, uses the motion to open the safe and then says, Alice's key is gone. But she was right there and no one went in. But I have the key right here because I'm a third dimensional being. I yeah. can do things that she can't possibly be aware of because she can't look up at us, and she can't even imagine it. She lets it go, and then, like, bursts the drawing on the floor, and she says, this thing operates in higher dimensionality. I don't know how much higher. Depending on how far this reaches, it could operate upwards of the ninth dimension. Anything four would... People could appear... 
fourth dimensional I mean, obviously, this is my entire field of research, but a fourth dimensional being could appear directly in front of us out of nowhere, and it would seem as if they teleported by magic, right? They could remove this pen from your hand at any moment, and you would never know how they did it because they're above you dimensionally. I mean, it's it's how this ship got here. We transited through a higher dimension. Absolutely. So, Metasionics, teleportation, these are my specialties. I understand where you're coming from on this one. And Quentin's scratching his chin. When you mention that you're a teleportation specialist, she just <laughs> reaches down and goes, update notes. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't tell you what this leads to. I think it's a fixed point in space, a very similar object somewhere else in the galaxy like, maybe I, in the system probably within the sector yeah. it's a link between the two that allows instantaneous communications that's you know that that fits with what i've experienced you as a, use as this I, device no i haven't used it i probed it as an understanding well i, I suppose as a okay, question she says, so you did use it because, again, by observing how it works, you have activated it. You've used this device. What was it your was... experience like? At this point, she just like openly has a transcription <laughs> program up on the wall that's transcribing everything you say. Uh, Quentin, Quentin, mm, how uh, much would Quentin say? And with Minerva's right there. How much does Minerva yeah, like Quentin say? I mean. <laughs> As far as Minerva's concerned, you've just thrown her full kit and caboodle into this project. So it's Minerva funny. like <laughs> hits a few things on her pad uh, on on the pad to pull up the video feed of wherever it was that Van V disassembled and put it back together, and it just like hands it to her to watch that 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 clip. All right, <laughs> we're gonna take our break there because we're past time and people are getting hit with random ads on Twitch. I believe when we uh -oh. come back, uh, we're gonna figure out what the next step is. Stick around. Awesome. Negative two. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty decent overlap. Hello. Where are we? What are we doing? Uh, we were just discussing how Minerva's creeping on the crew and how Van V's suspect. <laughs> I thought Minerva was present for this conversation in the cargo bay for some reason. She is, yeah. 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 I she didn't brought know it was super creeping. So it, so the, I, it was just uh, commenting on, on it occurring to Van V when Minerva said that it wasn't going to share any of the observations or anything that that was uh, you know, his privacy. He was like, wait, does that mean that I'm being spied on as well? <laughs> yeah, and you're, you're building this database on shit that I do after at the last place we were at, I paid an extra thousand credits not to have that done. <laughs> <laughs> well... Where do we want to go from here? Uh, Iona has completed her end of the job, so you owe her mm -hmm. $2,000. Credit sent, yeah. Easy Perfect. peasy. For sure, Um Yeah, we're still in the cargo, babe. If you want to be. You guys tell me. I, mean, I don't know if there's anything else to do there. Yeah. If you are ready to leave this station and do the cargo transfer, I'm ready to do that. I think uh, um, while the armature and the captain and Iona are all talking about the pen and doing the cool explanation about how this thing works, I, I, I don't tell me if I'm wrong, but I didn't think Van V was going to be there for the pen thing. I See, think I, Van V is outside the ship right now, hanging out. I don't know if he's uh, drinking with Jimbo. Oh, you're heading into the station. So when you're at, let's follow that thing. By the card game. Uh, <laughs> the first thing that happens is you have to wait in the uh, airlock into the station for five minutes because they're, they're experiencing rolling blackouts and they need five minutes to charge the power to turn the, you know, the airlock on to, de I want to say desanitize, but that's not the right word. I'm they're doing a quarantine suit. procedure on you to clean you up. You basically have to stand in an empty airlock for like five minutes just waiting around until it turns on randomly around you. Yeah, so this station, there are tons of people openly wearing armor, 
I'm talking it's like KISS concerts. Nice. Like people are wearing like all black leather. It's like a combination of like an S and M convention and KISS. Uh people are wearing like ridiculously <laughs> large spikes, full on tattoos. Yes, decam decontamination. Thank you, chat. Um, my brain is dying. I'm actually super sick right now. I didn't want to say oh. anything. I'm so sick right now. Um, there is a pageantry to the pirates walking around here. Um, what you can tell immediately is that none of them have bounties. So they're, you know, they either this system hasn't caught up with them yet or they're pirates who like were born to pirates and haven't really committed any crimes but this is just their lifestyle um but yeah like people walking around with big guns on their shoulders just like huge rifles walking around like this people will stop you and say hey man your captain looking for for people to work you got you got a job what are you thinking what do you got to offer uh i got he points to his bicep, got four kills. I'm skilled at HMG. Got Betsy right here. I'm also rated pretty highly in close quarters combat. And I'm a partial biopsionic. Is there any way I can make a, like a read for bullshit? <laughs> I don't think you need to. This guy is not bullshit. Like, to... <laughs> You don't even have to make a read for bullshit because you can just look up his profile on your, you know, you can just be like, oh, I'm just going to, I'm just hold us on a second. I'm going to get a picture of your face. And like, <clears throat> you know, he, he's listed on the exchange as like an open for hire mercenary. Uh, he's not looking ask... for any job in particular. He's just asking for 200 credits a day. for day rate. Let me ask you something. Have you ever been to a uh, Mira nine before? A Mira nine. Yeah. Yeah, the pirate space station. Yeah, I was born there. So you you'd say you know your way around there pretty well? Oh yeah. Yeah, I know my way around there pretty well. All right. All right. Who are you, uh, who are you with? Who are you repping with? Um my, my, my crew we're, we're we're making a journey that way soon and I I'll check with my captain see if he thinks it's worthwhile having perhaps someone that knows the area a local as opposed to us going in blind. I mean, which organization are you with? Eh, I'll let you know if you need to know. <laughs> okay all right play it like that i respect i respect the hustle he sent you his contact information and says hey hit me up if you want to get a drink or anything if you got any work what is, what's it what's the name that comes with this guy i mean so his mercenary name is slicer Ooh, um, I, like it. I like it it doesn't include his you know legal name sure yeah yeah he just says yeah name slicer all right all right. Well, thanks, Slicer. I'll, I'll get back to you probably, you know, shortly, within within an hour or two here. Yeah, cool. He gives you the Predator arm shake, the man shake. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He is fucking Van Jack, dude. I feel, oh, man. And Van V's this scrawny dude, so I'm sure I kind of go up and down with the shake. <laughs> you literally have two murders to your name in the last two weeks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You're half as qualified so as this guy. Yeah. <laughs> now I just have to kill some more people around the same level. <laughs> yep, that's Don't worry, Minerva thinks you're going to. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I mean, no one state. else approaches you like that. No one else has that kind of forwardness. But yeah, you get approached by tons of merchants who want you to check out their latest tabloids, rumors about the royal princess of Midipile, rumors about Thord, uh, conspiracies of a secret fleet of Pope ships imminent alien invasion meta wheat prices tanking will cause the economy to a collapse someone tries to get you to join the flat galaxy society oh man i think i never would have a field day with that one <laughs> <laughs> our uh, galaxy is flat dunamis it is factual <laughs> it's flat it's it's flat most galaxies are i i mean i don't think anything that jumps out to Okay. Van V. There so. are a couple good bars here. Um, mm -hmm. As you're walking past one, you get like that slow mo as you are aware that violence is about to break out. You're like something. Something catches your eye as you walk past the bar, and 
You see someone pull a short barrel, double barrel shotgun mm. out from underneath a coat and then cock back both hammers and puts it to the back of someone's head and says, John Lawrence, you're bound by law. You're coming back with me. My, my spidey sense tells me it's time to leave. I cannot afford to kill a third person. <laughs> <laughs> this is a this, just be clear this is a bar that has like a room full of people playing poker uh just getting off of work sort of deal like mm -hmm. it's like a family bar and this dude wearing a trench coat a 10 gallon hat uh spurs on his boots and a double barrel shotgun pulls on a dude in the bar and like everything stops and you are walking past the bar and you're like i'm i'm leaving okay you you make yourself gone. Uh, probably a good idea given your history with law enforcement. <laughs> I mean, I re I really wanted to be like, well, I thought he's playing cards there. And as soon as the gun comes out, I just fold my hand, grab my money, and leave. Oh, I love that. I love that so much more. <laughs> right, you hear you hear him explaining like Lawrence is just like, who are you with? And as you walk out the door, this dude's like, you got a girl pregnant on Lita, my friend. You're coming home with me. <laughs> Man. <laughs> As soon as I hear Lita, uh, what was the name? Because now I want to write it down and check for the captain if he knows the guy. John Lawrence. <laughs> yeah, you know of the Cockneysville Lawrences. It's a small planet. He knows everybody. It really is. Just, <laughs> just two million people. No big deal. <laughs> he's uh he's one of those weird power people, doesn't he? Know everybody's minds on Lita. <laughs> <laughs> weird power people. Uh, yeah, I mean, you head to another bar, you get some drinks. People here are pretty friendly. You know, it's it's that there are no government connections here, right? There's It's private security. They make sure that everybody who's here stays happy as best possible and that the people who are going to break what few, few rules there are disappear quietly. Um, so everyone is happy to show off their knives, talk about how hard their day is, how rough their work is, coming back from the space asteroid mines, you know, talk about how big of a killer they are, or how about how, what a menace psychics are in the, in your society, but uh, you'd have to be a true lunatic to cause problems here on, uh, on nine. Yes. Yeah, so I, I think my, my, my goals would be to... Uh, give Jimbo a call, just grab a couple of drinks with him, just pass some time until the ship's done. But then if there's anything that would jump out to Van V to get Minerva, that would be cultural exposure for like a different system, different planet or uh, station, I should say. It's like anything that like, it's funny you said kiss. Cause I was thinking music based off the last conversation, but anything that would like pirate music that, be like oh, this is generally yeah. what these folks would listen to absolutely uh it's almost all like late 90s Eurobeat nordic trash like that song from moldova from the like european music competition with the saxophone that's like bang, 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 bang. like shit like that yes. is all super popular <laughs> sax here. guy whatever yeah. the hell it was. <laughs> oh my god uh, my just like the, again, we're all Americans here, born. So we're we're all millennials or millennialish. <laughs> it's a very different type of music than what we are used to. That's the norm mm -hmm. here, uh, in this system. Uh, I think probably the biggest cultural touchstone is the they call themselves the Sky Skimmers, uh, the people who uh like race chemical rockets and solar sails between planets. Uh, it's very popular trying to make better orbital transfers. Uh, I know that sounds boring, but it is essentially the most pure form of physics-based racing, uh, is figuring out how to get the best pork chop plot between the two planets as they go around the sun. Jeez. I feel like if I stayed for a day, I'd be betting on this, but... <laughs> it's a super bettable sport, for sure. There's tons of side bets too, like you know, like what day does oxygen break down? Oh man! Uh, there's something called mm. like the big bet is for something called the Apollo 13 uh, option. Uh, you know, that's like a ten thousand to one bet. Oh my gosh! I think uh, the only other 
thing I'd hang around for is I would have sent some sort of message probably through Minerva, just, you know, cause she's, she's like our team's link, uh, to ask, um, Quentin, if he, he sees any need for us to have a local on Omira nine, um, for into a mercenary seems, seems like a good dude, but don't want to give him any information or bring him back to the ship without, uh, without any team buy-in first, basically. Mm. Goes by the name Slicer if whenever everyone wants to look him up. That's Slicer with a Y, by the way. Oh, yeah. uh, I realized beautiful. that when I said it, Lysa. I didn't indicate that. Captain, it appears Van V has a, a, a question about possibly paying for a guide for the next leg of our journey. I, uh, but he ran into this individual, and I pull up Slicer's file for you to see. The whole and, uh, apparently, yeah, what um, is the like background check we get? Do we see four confirmed kills? What is it? What? Yeah, so you know, it, it he is a specialist in close quarters combat, but he also mm-hmm. routinely uses uh the HMG as a intimidation factor. People hire him, and his job appears to mostly be escorting ship personnel and captains who think there might be trouble and his presence dissuades the trouble from ever happening he's a preventative measure and mm-hmm. you know as a result he's rarely hired sort of deal like people don't know how good they have it when they have him around sort of deal mm-hmm. um yeah like he has included self-shot drone cam and gopro footage of himself laying down like on a ramp covering fire and just like shouting to VIPs. He's like, Mr. Barathol, get on the fucking ship. Get to the chopper. <laughs> and just like dudes running towards the ship and like someone is chasing them with a pistol and then like a wave of saw fire like sprays to the area. Everybody ducks behind cover and he like grabs the dude as he goes past throws him onto the ship, like, hits the landing ramp. Uh, he's leaning out of the ramp, spraying the cops down <laughs> as the ship is taking off. Oh, my God. Like, this dude is an Pretty adrenaline impressive. junkie for sure. <laughs> and you think he loves doing this kind of shit. But, yeah, uh-huh. like, you know, people, well, given his employment record, people don't hire him often, which may be why he charges so much. Gotcha. I mean, he... Hmm. He seems reliable, I guess. It, it, v, you say he's a local? It, we'll call him up in three minutes. Man, call v, re, uh, I mean, I can link. Uh, I should be able to connect the two of you together on like a ship comp. Yeah. I mean, Operator. you can call him audio. You can call voice. You can have him appear telepresence via hologram. What do you, you want to do? You can fourth dimensional space just no, appear in front of me. That one. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I'll, I'll I'll go as much as I can. We'll have a we'll have a little hollow projection of Van V All right, he standing there with his you, unit. <laughs> he gives you like a give me two minutes thing, and then you you know mm-hmm. you get him appear. It builds uh, like from the extremities inward, like it, it's blue, like light blue as it builds, and then it turns to his flesh tone color, and then like his outfit i mean he's got two shoulder pads with spikes off of them and you know like standard army fatigues with like extra plates um and then all just spray painted black um i want to say his leather pants but that's definitely not true he 100 percent has movable pants that you could run and fight in for sure uh and he goes hey what's up the name's slicer Oh, we called Slicer. I was just trying to chat with Van V on the. Oh, on the... sorry, I thought you were calling Slicer. But <laughs> oh, we no, can fine. totally call Slicer. No, you can call, no, no, go ahead, call Van V. I got this totally wrong. You're calling Van V while he's at the bar with oh Jim. I was like, man, sounds like Van V took a he changed. No, no, no. All right, so you you call Van V at the bar. Van V, you know, gets gets a little local telemetry. The like bar mm-hmm. itself sends his holographic image. Uh, Jimbo's just like. Hey, say hi to your crew for me. Well, little Jimbo. Hey, Cap, what's going on? Hey, so this guy Slicer, Slicer. What's your what's your read here on this guy? Like, I look, we just. I, I think we might have calmed Diono down a little bit. Is this guy going to like amp the situation back up? Well, you know that that's a good point, Cap. Uh, 
I was just thinking, you know, we're heading to a pirate point. Mm-hmm. We're not exactly, uh, well, at least we're trying not to be the most violent bunch. Uh, if, if, I'm thinking if we just go in to get the treasure map and get out, that should, should be fine. But what if, what if there's someone else who wants that treasure map real bad, right? And uh, things don't go as planned. I, I don't, I just thought it might be good to one, have a local cause maybe they can, maybe they can help us navigate a back street or something out of there without violence mm-hmm. or well, we do have a contact there. We do have, uh, what was the, uh, S- Sinestro there, Carlito. That's true. We're, we're under his flag. Us, um, yeah. use of what was it uh, again? Hermano. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's basically a, a little droid with a flag carrier that has, their corporate logo on it. Right. So we, we kind of have at least some protection built in by default, but you know, somebody who might be able to, to navigate the, you know, less mm, public aspects of that might be worth it. I'm definitely yeah, I mean, open to it. I, how, what do we got? It's going to be like, what, like three days to get there. How long do we got to hire this guy for? That's the question. Cause he's, he's not cheap. A long time. You got to transit there and then, you know, however long you stay right how long is this this when when's the auction do we do we, is there a specific date you heard it was being delayed until the second week of february because people kept adding items to the auction and they're like oh you're having an auction can you wait like two extra days i think i can get there on time and i got this okay. big item so it just kept being like, pushed that's... back and pushed back and pushed back that's like three weeks of us on the station or something like that right like once we get there or we skip that and go up to the salvage job first, I guess, and, and, and come back. Come back with more money. Yeah, that's that's probably okay. Um, you know what? Yeah, that, that adds up pretty quickly. <laughs> I think we might need to skip this guy, but if he's still available and we have the time, we could try to pop back here and grab him. I like the idea of having a local guide, somebody who can help out, but I don't know. He might be a little expensive right this second. I hear you, Cap. Uh, I can shoot him a message and just say, you know what? We got this other job we're going to go complete first, but uh, we'll be circling back. And, you know, it'd be, it'd be nice to have someone with his knowledge and his expertise mm-hmm. on Mirror 9. And if he's up for it, uh, we... we I'm we shoot, him, shoot us a message if he changes location, if he happens to head in that direction. You know? Yeah, I will, I will give him a nervous contact. Okay. He gets back to you guys within five minutes and he says... Hey, you know, I meet a lot of people. Very few of them ever get back to me. I really appreciate that. And I'm so glad about your interest. If I'm available, I will definitely book with your crew. Well, that is that is great to hear. Wait, is this like a text? No, I it's call. a text. Never mind. Yeah. Okay, never mind. <laughs> oh, one thing I just wanted to say, because I mentioned it earlier, but I, I didn't mention it as part of his file. He is a biopsionicist, so like... As part of his bodyguard duty, oh. sometimes he brings people who have been died in his, who've been killed in his that's, care back to life. Yeah, that's kind of awesome. So he is a partial psionicist, which you know gotcha. means he can only take one discipline ever. He was basically right. born with medical biopsionic powers, and that's it. Sweet. Medical, huh? That's a good one. <laughs> he might be useful. Okay. Slicer. Everybody's ready to head to the drop off for the construction job. Yeah. After that, I think I'll uh, get back to the ship. I think on the way, uh, Minerva is going to try to hit up the captain. Okay. Um, I don't, the captain hasn't exhibited any weirdness over the holograms and stuff, right? No, he's he's pretty comfortable in general. Like, okay. He then didn't I, grow up with technology, but he he finds it interesting and fascinated and enjoy it. Well, I guess uh, wh- wherever the captain is and whatever he's doing, we'll have like one of those holograms just sort of pop up in the room. <laughs> I feel like one's um, probably meditating at that point. Uh, captain, am I interrupting something? No, oh, no. What's up, Minerva? How are you doing? I was wondering if you had a minute to talk. Do you um, got something on your mind? I was a little curious and possibly a little bit concerned about Vanvi. Okay. Yeah. Um, How so? Well, 
I, I understand I, ha- I haven't known him long, but well, he has been involved in violence twice and he's at least somewhat estranged with his family. And I, I can't, I, I'm wondering, do you think those might be related? Hmm. You know, I'm not a psychologist, but um, I, he's had a rocky road, you know, from what I understand of things. And when we met, you know, he he, had, he was coming off a personal tragedy on top of, you know, everything else. Um, yeah, man, like it's, 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 that's hard to say, but it probably, it's all related, Minerva. That's really what it boils down to. Oh, it all well, comes together. I mean, as far as I've seen, you don't have the same sort of violent tendencies that he does. Are you closer to your family than he is? Yeah, I mean, my family and I were very close. I, I don't know if we're we're closer. It, it seems like Van V's very you know, cares quite a bit about his family. It's just you, you've heard about it. how much. So, I guess out of character, how much has Van V shared entirely with about his mother with with us? Um, I, I probably, my, my real mother, not a lot. Mm-hmm. Like what is, the, you, you know the, that the main conflict with the family and yeah, you, you know that the mother, I was brought to mid pile as a kid with my dad and then he remarried and that's like the other family that parts. Yeah. That's all known mm-hmm. before that. There's not a lot. Van V knows himself and he wouldn't right. want to, he wouldn't want to open those doors. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, family's complicated, especially when you don't know the whole story. You know, I think that might be part of it for Van V, but you know, I love my family. They're fantastic. <laughs> yeah. A lot to live up to. That's what they are. That's what my family is. <laughs> I don't oh, think cast I have a big shadow. I don't think I've had the opportunity to, to get to know anything about your family. I mean, we stopped uh, by know... Van V's home, but, uh, yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. I, I wouldn't say I ran from Lita. I just, it, Lita was comfortable. It was easy. And, uh, yeah, my family made it that way. Like, you know, they're <laughs> big fish, little pond, as far as that goes. They're fantastic. But, uh, yeah, they had a, they had a path uh, laid out for me. And I can basically every decision made. So that's, that's why I'm out here at the end of the day, but they, yeah, I mean, I Lita. think huh. I can relate to that. Is that part of why you chose to leave? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Every step of my life was planned and, you know, scheduled. There was, there wasn't a choice I had to make. It was just live up to the expectation and, you know, uh, I might not have been doing it. I don't know. <laughs> All I know is it was uh, the pressure was wasn't wasn't worth it. I don't know. It... Well, it picks at you. I've learned that parents are both easy to probably easy to disappoint and in their own ways will be disappointing, but it doesn't change how special they are. You know what? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they are a big part of who I am and I love and appreciate them. Like, don't get me wrong. I appreciate that they wanted me to have an easy life, a good life. You know, the one that they planned out for me It's just, you know, how do I know who I am until I get to figure out what choices I, I want to make? I don't know. I feel like I'm trying to figure this out as I go, but they wanted me to have it all done. I don't know. We, we, but, I mean, well, I'm, I'm glad I get to I, be on this. We don't know much about how you got. I mean, do you have someone that you consider a parent, Minerva? I do. I have someone that I considered to be the closest approximation to a father. Yeah. He's no longer with us. But um, but you will always be unique and special. 
Yeah. yeah. I think um I think in maybe the ways he wasn't intending, he taught me my first real lessons about humanity. I'd really like to get to meet your family. Like we got to meet Van V's, but I feel that would probably be complicated if I have not yet revealed myself. It's been a while since I've been back and I have been avoiding it mostly because I kind of feel like they're going to try to convince me to stay, but I think I've got enough momentum out here enough to show that we might mosey on over there at some point. Yeah. And I'd love for you to get to meet him. I think they, it's, they find you very interesting, but I, I'll be honest, you know, there's plenty of folk on Lita who might be able to tease out your true nature. Uh, Perhaps it's... the trip will have to wait. <laughs> or at least if we take the trip for you, I might not yet get to have the opportunity. That's fair. You know, my, my sister, she's Zoe. She's out here, out here somewhere roaming the sector. Maybe there's, it's, you know, it's a, it's a big sector lots of places but there's a chance we might run into her out here somewhere a chance encounter might be pleasant yeah yeah absolutely i haven't seen zoe in so long i haven't seen any of them i mean shoot i'm getting a little homesick minerva well it was not my intention <laughs> that's all right and quentin um we'll go he said actually you know what and since the ship now has a, a record player, he will dig around in some of his personal effects and, and pull out like an old record uh, stuffed in there. Uh, something that's, you know, very Texas twangy inspired, very leaden, uh, and put that on and, uh, you know, explain that to Minerva and probably sing along a little bit. Oh, it's like a acoustic guitar <laughs> recording session by a campfire so you can hear the crackling with a low quality Ooh. mic the guy's singing about how everything's better when you take it slow there you go <laughs> uh you leave the station question mark you drop off the goods Twenty four thousand is injected into your credits you hear a you catch a brief communication between the team leader and the guy that's like driving the space forklift that's just like who the fuck are these guys that they're being paid this much to transport you know like <laughs> the oh the the overhead on this is ridiculous like yeah you know, somebody here has got to be someone's kid <laughs> <laughs> Right around midnight, you can set course for Astapol if that's your decision. If not, I need to know what you're doing. Are we coming yeah. back for the option? Yeah, 48 hours. Go ahead. So are, I'm at the are, planet Astapol to drop off the pen. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, the pen. You remember? Captain's decision. The pen, the whole reason you're here? Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like we have to. we have to drop it off, you know? Uh, so essentially, yeah, let, we'll, we'll get team meeting, team meeting. Let's get together and we'll make our, I mean. Is the yeah, part of the that. team now? I was, I was about to ask Ooh, that. Ca Captain, that's, I, I believe we've, you've offered funding to Yono. She's part of the team now. Shouldn't she be part of this? All right, Minerva, shoot her a message. Okay. She's in the what? conference room and she's called up a holographic mirror. She is brushing her teeth for this meeting is in her pajamas, uh, which are like a full body cat Kigurumi, like a tabby cat. She looks <laughs> kind of tired and she's got like a cup of decaf that she's brushing her teeth with. Amazing. <laughs> well, I'll Amazing. pop up a text message that says like, uh, um, should Maybe. you wish you have been invited to uh, a meeting to discuss um the um uh and the ethical discussion about the conclusion of the job related to the to the object everybody gets wow. that yeah okay even uh your, your cappy boy shows up yeah <laughs> i mean 
emanates calm. Well, folks, is um, just in her seat, going in slow circles, trying to stay awake. I think when Van V sees uh, Louis show up, he he just assumes they're going to have to do a, like a pre-session meditation, and the Van V just sits on the floor waiting for it to start. <laughs> I don't oh. know. Would, would you like a drink or something? Just some water, I guess, would be fine. Yeah, you know, I, I grabbed course. some decaf when I was passing by the kitchen. But, you know, <laughs> I just didn't want to be super amped up, but, you know, I didn't know we'd be meeting at midnight. I'll, uh, so, I'll, I'll grab yeah, you a up? drink of water real quick. Thank you so much. And, uh, <laughs> Quentin will will tap Van V on the head. And say, "Hey, we'll, we'll we'll skip that right right now." We'll, we'll... Oh, all right, sorry, sorry, Kat. No, it's, it's I appreciate the enthusiasm. And next time, absolutely, because you know I want you to get in touch with your inner self. I think that's an important part of well, knowing honestly, who you are. I sat down because I thought it was required, but now that I know it's optional. <laughs> <laughs> Louis moves to sit down next to you, Van V, and just kind of sagely nods. And pushes an orange so that it rolls in front of you. Oh, thank you, Louis. I, I could use some some vitamin C right about now. He rests his Absolutely. chin on the table. Minerva comes back with a glass of water and gives it to Ayana. Yeah, she spits and it. And then has a seat. Washes her mouth out with it. She was brushing her teeth. Yes. <laughs> oh, spits in it. Ah, okay. Yeah, Minerva will oh. have a seat. Goes back to drinking her coffee. <laughs> So, folks, we know what this uh, pen roughly does and is. We know we are in the middle of it. We know we've got a job that we are contracted to do. So it, here's the thing. We need to get this thing as far from us as quickly as possible, at least in my book at this point. And regardless of what Chase's motives are, eh, the way the exchange works kind of puts us in a bind. I don't think we have a way out of this. And I think the only way that gets us in the least trouble is to deliver it. I mean, and that's where I'm at. Ultimately, it's your decision. My concern is only, is this object more imminently dangerous than the difficulties we would cause ourselves? I mean, I would say it could be one of the most dangerous objects I've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> it's a communication device that defies the laws of physics and allows instantaneous transmission of information across an oh none but probably expansive reach of space i mean this item could be used to coordinate a war uh which i think makes it extremely dangerous perhaps not in the way you're thinking of um you know like i think you can just break it with a hammer honestly uh, if you're worried about it, it's not like going to explode. It doesn't have anything like that. Hey, yeah. Captain, do, do, do we do we know anyone that maybe just to understand what the the value of this item is uh, dollar wise? Because I, I I know we're in a predicament, but I also there's wonder no, if we have. Had... There's no limit on the value of this object. Yeah, that making on the this buyer is in this case, I think. Yeah. And uh, you're aware well, of we the know, technology level ratings, you know, one through four plus five, etc. This is technology level six. Oh, shit. You know, this push the edge like of what the mandate <clears throat> could do back in the day. Listen, I, I got to wonder, sir. Uh, not only do we, are we getting taken advantage of in that we didn't know what we signed up for, but we're getting hosed on the payout for this, too. No, I, I'm not. I'm not sure we should go in there and, and try to negotiate further because we're, you know, we're trying to avoid violence. But yeah, uh, it really feels like we have an opportunity, perhaps, to make a little bit knowing, no, knowing what this device is. You know, like her eyes widen when you talk about altering the deal. And we, and look, the thing that I know, look, the reason that we went forward with this job is basically because, you know, I accepted it without enough information. And then we looked up who this guy was and we figured this is a person who it's worth doing a job for because 
they happen to to essentially be responsible for all of the armatures in the sector and programming wise etc like this is someone with connections and technology but potential buyer for future things that we at least that's what was our initial thought this thing is as yono says incredibly valuable potentially incredibly dangerous in the right hands or the wrong hands i i don't know what the right play is but i do know that us hanging on to it does not make our lives simpler than getting rid of it 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 does sir i guess i um i'm feeling a little a little caught in a conundrum that if we don't trust this Jace fella, and it really could be something that could start a war, are we doing the right thing by completing the mission and giving it to him? I mean, I we know. we keep talking about morality here, and it, I feel like it can go. We can argue this either way. I don't know, I, but I I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. The longer it's in our possession, the more of a target on our back. But what what if what if this Jace fella wants to tie up loose ends? Then what? We're pretty unique, and everybody knows we came into this system. We broadcast that when we got here. There's not a lot of leading ships out here in the sector. Well, that's the exchange true. is well aware of this job. Like anything he could take from that, pers- any action from that perspective, I feel like is one that would have repercussions. And uh, both of us are not unconnected. I suppose that's true, I- sir. I-, I we can rely on. We can rely on him to follow follow that etiquette, I guess. I just we're so close to pirate territory. Uh hard to say what he might believe in. Look, there's a ton of lessons learned in this one. <laughs> uh Minerva, what what do you think? I this is your command. I will respect your decision. I just want to make sure that there's thought put into the weight of the effect this will have on others' lives versus the weight it could have on ours. And as long as that is considered, then that is all I can ask. Rush back to episode negative two. <laughs> it is definitely being considered. And I, you know, I'd be lying if I said I knew 100% certainty what the right answer was. So, you know, I'm open to suggestions, but I, I think we need to deliver this thing and get it done well all right then so we we just we we show up drop it off get paid and don't even stay for breakfast just get on out then don't i'd say keep the ship running the whole time look yeah i don't know what he's how how he's gonna be how how this is gonna play out whether he's gonna try to keep us on a hook and do it but i agree we we drop this thing off and we do our best to skedaddle and if and if he tries to offer us additional missions, just politely decline. Mm-hmm. We've got we've got a pressing need to get up on over to Ad Meads and get this salvage job done. I think that's where we need to go. All right, sounds like a plan, sir. Yeah. January morning of January sixteenth arrival time at Astapel. Any. It's a lock-in. That's a lock-in. As you begin orbiting the planet, you can see that um, a lot of traffic is not allowed to land on Asapel. A lot of these sky riders are not given landing clearance, and uh, the planetary defense frigate in orbit is occasionally gently nudging people with shots across the bow sort of deal. Um, you, however, are given priority landing clearance, um, and as soon as that happens, your uh, your ship's computer goes wild, Minerva, because pretty much within an instant of that happening, a ship near you, a sky skimmer ship, like a chemical rocket ship, uh, immediately begins retrograde breaking orbit to pass near you and begins broadcasting a emergency distress signal. Uh, you can see that they have sabotaged their own ship. Uh, and they're mm. just like, to any ships in the area, and specifically the LAS Golden Goose, we are going down. We are requesting emergency services. Uh, please, oh, there are over 100 people on board. We need help. Yeah, so I guess 
wherever the captain is for a situation update, like he'll get like a a pop up that has like the audio of that, and it'll also include cool. um like a, an image of the ship, and then like arrows pointing and little like pop outs showing the sabotage components and information suggesting mm -hmm. that the ship was sabotaged. Yep, they popped their heat shield off and just like manually ejected one of their booster rockets. So. They were definitely going into the atmosphere, and if they do, they will absolutely die. It might be a dumb question, but if there's 100 yeah. people, it's got to be a good-sized ship with a lot of people. How how many people can we hold? Can we actually I mean, help? You could, well, we have the track track you could hold at this point with the amount of food oxygen you have just to get down to the planet. You could hold almost 200 people for a several-hour ride to, to the planet. Um, but then I mean, your off. cargo bay is... <laughs> is quite large cubically and people don't i mean i know you feel like you take up a lot of space it. but you cram them in people don't really take up that much space you know yeah. okay but we know they say they sabotage their own ship yes. uh, essentially so this yep. is obviously very sketch we do have the tractor beam we can get them back into some sort of stabilized orbit you could uh that would be my suggestion to minerva like minerva this is this that is would, real you don't think they can fix this thing they would they would then, you know, Nobody be left with little around, ability but... to change okay. their destiny while stuck in orbit. It's it's essentially a death sentence as well. If you oh, were okay. to just bring them back that's up and leave them enough. there. Yeah, the amount of morality in this <laughs> game. What I loved is that you suggested a humanitarian and rescue mission. This has been on the board since before episode one. <laughs> this encounter. Uh -huh. I've been waiting for it. We took a long ass time getting here. We're here. You told me mm. in, in the pre like in the episode zero even before the episode zero stuff that you guys wanted to also be like rescue rangers and yes. necessary yeah, missions yeah. Yeah. this was the first thing i thought of was what do you do when people desperate to get on the ground sabotage themselves basically gambling their lives that you are good enough people to pick them up and that's what's oh, happening okay. right now live I on see, your I screen see. I mean, Minerva's mm. suggestion would be to tractor and pull into orbit and then assess the danger and possibly yeah. try to yeah. repair the craft. Absolutely. I think that's the, the, the basic move. I mean, regardless uh, of regardless the thing of that we'll reason, remind ourselves of is the, the, uh, the, it should be the, noted. The, I the Jack it, offers. <laughs> regardless of the reason for their, for the sabotage, they will all die if we do nothing. We and, can't what let we that don't, and what we don't necessarily have to bring them down to the planet, we can try to bring them up and see if we can set up some repairs. All right. Yeah. No, let's let's get over there. Let's at least stabilize the orbit immediately, see what we can see from the damage to the ship. And if we have to bring them on board, we'll bring them on board. Uh, Y'all, just let's keep in mind, like we just saw uh, when we came into the system, the latest news is talking about folks who are looking to use situations like this to get line shunts into the ship and do some hacking. So Minerva, please be on. I uh, might, might, might right. I propose, sir, that... Uh... We we lock down everything but the cargo bay and put Do anything it. they might need in the cargo bay so they cannot leave that space. Do it absolutely. Okay. Uh, I would like to. Uh, there is. I'm um, looking for the specific thing, but there is a ship combat role that the comm officer can do to enhance ECM to make it harder to target the ship. Okay. Uh, I would like to run defensive ecm absolutely no approach. need to your technology level is so far above these people they're they're using modern cell phone technology versus your 600 plus year in the future super space technology right like you're like i'll have to use combat ecm and you press a button and they're immediately they're just like oh our communication system shut down shit <laughs> okay <laughs> Like, um, you're not even using combat ECM. You're just using some off-the-shelf jammer for civilian vessels. They're, they're in a walkie-talkie channel, too. Yeah, and you just picked up a walkie-talkie and held down the button on channel, technology too. technology versus true space peoples. Nice. Okay. Um, yeah, you unexpectedly are one of the extremely few ships in this universe that has a tractor beam to these people's great misfortune. You pull them out of their sabotaged deorbiting plan and stick them back in an orbit um you know they lost their booster they could probably make some impulse but they can no longer 
deorbit themselves. They don't have enough to force themselves to slow down. So their only option is to like go to some sort of orbital habitat in orbit. Um which we could certainly bring them there so you could. they don't Yeah. So they yeah. they have somewhere where they can try to affect other transport or repairs. I mean, you full on have them jammed. They've made no attempt to communicate out even with that jamming. Uh the ship has just gone completely dead stick while you drag them back up into orbit. Um, I, so I would, I I would like to that as this ship called out for help, a number of other ships around you turned their transponders off and went dark. Mm. Uh, and this is a common practice among people who don't want to answer distress calls. Gotcha. Uh, I would like to run the ECM just long enough to scan to make sure that the ship has no way to harm us, no weapon systems of any kind. I mean, it and doesn't then, have weapon turn systems, the but... It could harm you by slamming into you, right? Like sure. But uh, it, once I once I determine that the uh, the ship has no weapons, I'll turn the ECM off, and I won't be worried about targeting. And if they want to fly at us, that's a whole separate issue. I so, mean, you what? have them in the tractor beam; they couldn't fly at you if they wanted to. <laughs> yeah. Right. So like yeah, once I determine there's no weapons, I drop the ECM, okay. so the captain can contact them. And just a to quick refresher, we we said when we came into the system that there, essentially there's some some limitations on what like uh, them actually being allowed to come down to the surface as yeah. far as this goes. So you've been given landing clearance; these guys have not, right? Uh -huh. um, technically, the landing clearance is by ship, so if you brought them on board, they could technically okay. come down with you. And given that the exchange of events that happened in such incredibly short order they probably marked you days ago and were waiting for something like this to happen okay and as far as that goes like is it straight up just a, is it illegal for this refugee situation from as far as the planetary if government's they get concerned down to the surface, is like... that they can claim you know refugee status okay. and stuff like okay. that okay so all right. It's not necessarily like kind of get us in trouble so much as it is like how much do we want to risk for them? I okay. mean, the government put out a notice in the newspaper, you know what I mean? Like they did everything they could to stop this from happening. This is just the way the laws work on Astapol. You're right. not going to get in trouble okay. for this, although it'll be a pain in somebody's ass. All right. Beautiful. So, yeah, we'll, somebody we'll will be inconvenienced, but I dropped the ECM so you can talk to them. Perfect. We'll, we'll open up comms and say, uh, this is the LAS Golden Goose. We have you in Tractor Beam. We, what's going on? Uh, you get a call back over from uh, a husky sounding woman who says, this is Ania with them. Yeah, you guys got us. Um, look. I don't know. You know, well, just know. be honest with me. Be what do you want to do with us? You know, our our fate is in your hands. Where are you from? Why why are you here? I mean, people on the ship are from a lot of places. I'm from Indiana. I'm gonna be honest mm -hmm. with you. I mean, I I have cancer. I have a really treatable form of cancer, but we we don't have what it takes to solve that where I'm from. And, you know, I'm just, if I could even just get on your ship and use your auto dock for like six hours, I would be good. Um, But, you know, most of the people on this ship, you know, they all, we all have our reasons. People just want a better life. I mean, Astapel is the best planet. I mean, just, you know, it's crazy how good life is there. Gwen's uh, thinking a little bit about, about Lita Are you still and, there? and cancer, right? She mentioned cancer. This mm -hmm. is the one of the few things that can't be actually just easily taken care of on Lita. Uh, uh, it you you'd get a text message so that your conversation isn't being interrupted from Minerva. Mm -hmm. It says that um, by all accounts there will, should be no legal repercussions for us providing aid and charity to people seeking seeking help. 
No, let's Kev, do it. I, I think we could we could use some good juju right about now. I agree. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, shit, lock down the cargo base. Lock down everything. We need to keep everybody out and away from Yono's experiment. Get that entire region locked down. We can have folks in anywhere but there. Uh, I, I don't know how easy that is in terms of the layout of the ship or what we can do, but we'll. That's the goal. Lock that uh, entire area down and bring people in. This this ship does not have a standardized docking. I know that almost everything we've done so far has been pretty standardized. A clamp comes out and mm -hmm. locks on. Again, this is, you know, like international space station level of technology you're working with. Okay. But you're so, a salvage ship. You are, again, uniquely qualified to bring them on board through the cargo bay. Uh, Quinn so, will be out there as well, uh, prepared just in case there's any issues. He has the ability to activate a pressure field that can at least deal with, uh, you know, any sudden vacuum events. Okay. They, they bring 150 people on board. Um, yeah, so obviously getting, uh, Gwen will ask if Yono can, can help as far as I get, get Minerva ready, uh, get, get Van V, like get everybody lined up, hand out towels and water and whatever we can, as far as that goes real quick and get folks situated in, in ready for atmospheric entry. Okay. What are you going to do with their leftover rocket? Mm. Is there anything valuable enough for us to slice up and salvage? Otherwise, then I guess Push we back set this answer. thing into... I think if you wanted to spend a day out here, you could get about 500 credits worth of scrap, which you could use to repair your ship later. Yeah, we will We will go ahead and put this thing into... Um, is there anywhere... You know, it will we'll talk Classically to him in our place. Classically, a D-orbit burn, we'll just have That's it. That's what I was going to say, calculate yeah. the right place to, you to just put let it down. It, you, honestly, you just let it go while you're going down in the atmosphere. It will destroy Perfect. itself for sure. Right. Um, Do you want to offer Wizem and anyone else who needs it a spot on your auto dock on the way down? Uh, Minerva would emphatically request to be able to yeah, do a screening absolutely. and see what sort of help we can do. So to, to fix everybody's problems <laughs> will take oh about three days. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, we can commit to that, I think. Okay. So it's, yeah. on, it's only like six people. So like 144 people are going to disembark and get, you know, refugee status as soon as you're down there. Everybody else, the, the remaining six are just going to go into the auto dock and then rotate out as their treatments are are needed yeah minerva says that uh like ship access and monitoring of the guests during the medical treatment will be uh the ship minerva will put you know she's watching can close the doors there's reasonably safe basically trying to minimize risk as much as we can yeah okay. for sure you hit the ground a bunch of extremely agitated looking spaceport bureaucrats begin getting everybody. It's a really impersonal spraying them down with, it's like going through the decontamination, but with like a fire uh, extinguisher. And they're not in suits or anything. They're just spraying people like openly ruining their clothes. You could tell these people just don't give a shit about other humans at this point. Um, but yeah, the you know, like a control officer comes out and is just like, "Well, Captain, thank you for coming on down here and rescuing all these folks. Your Anytime. spaceport fee is paid for your one week pass here, on behalf of the Supreme Master." Fantastic. We have a luxury transport to get you there privately if you'd like to leave now. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, Fanfi, uh, Minerva, you, you're going to stay with the ship, right? I I believe it would make sense for me to stay with the ship and oversee the medical treatment. Yeah, I think that's a smart play. All right. Uh, Fee, okay, you're ready to go. Gonna, I'm, I'm guessing, given the number of people coming off your ship, are you going to resupply? Yeah. yeah. He hands yeah, you an invoice for 3,000 credits. <laughs> Uh, perfect. So, so he said we were paid to stay there for a week. 
Uh, you're not paid to stay here for a week. Your doc, your birth is paid for a week for as long as you want to stay for one yeah, day. Okay. I got gotcha. And again, okay. that's just the spaceport landing fees, essentially. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Quentin and Van V are leaving in what is essentially a 1800 style uh, two piston black board wow. with half brass, half rubberized wheels and a robot driver. And I think just at just it, it, you're so weirded out by an internal combustion engine. Just you're moving 30 miles an hour and the driver's like, hold on. We're really going to kick it up a notch <laughs> now here, guys. Puts it in third gear as a real daring choice as you pass a number of wooden and stone buildings, none of which are higher than three stories tall. Welcome oh to Astapol. Some have called Beautiful. it the best planet in the sector. Oh my goodness. Uh, you know, uh, okay. No, you should go ahead because I'm going to start talking experience immediately afterwards. Uh, I was just saying, uh, Cap, may maybe um, we need a word that lets me know when I should draw my weapon this time. Because <laughs> mm. last time I think it was a miscommunication of head nods, and I was like, all right, I'll do it. And <laughs> that didn't end well for us. So. Uh, oh, just you, you know, know so, what? something that makes us aligned to know what that's a really good idea. It needs to be something that we can work into conversation. Mm, 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 mm. I think we've Your got some word? time to think about it, sir. Yeah, kerfuffle. <laughs> kerfuffle. Okay. I don't think anyone worked towards your high-end goals, your long-term goals this session. No, I uh, I have a plan, but it did not come. It, no. it did not happen. I think that all of the short term goals were accomplished, and the crew goal. So I'll offer you all two experience points, and I will offer Neat. you an additional experience point for saving the lives of one hundred and fifty people. Oh, yeah. Wow, that actually Doing makes right a big thing. difference because that brings me up to twelve. Well, well, well. Is that a level up for you? It is. Level four. Here Congratulations. We are. Let me ask, are we good for next Monday? Next week? Yeah. We're finally so, gonna yeah. beat Supreme Master Jace Bronwyn. <laughs> and figure I out I was what just to do with he? <laughs> Does he know what it is? Do we know more than him? I don't know. Probably not. He's the Supreme Master. <laughs> What doesn't he know? Who is Johnson? You're just going to walk up to him and ask him that? Yeah. yeah that's a, that <laughs> that would be if he slaps him. So <laughs> successful. Who is Johnson? <laughs> so who's this Johnson person we screwed over? <laughs> just out of curiosity. <laughs> so I just want to know who my enemies are. <laughs> What an episode. Kane, I think I cut you off a couple of times there. I'm sorry about that. There's, I feel like sometimes I jump in while people are having inner party chatter and like, ah, I didn't realize people were still talking. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I got what I wanted to done. All right. I think it's good to keep us moving. Like, honestly, if you, do, if you don't cut me off, it will we'll just be like Slayer's Night so I can have a conversation with myself. <laughs> <laughs> Donar, thanks for the raid. Another Solaris Knights alumni. We're just gathering them all together tonight. <laughs> Hell yeah. That would work. Uh, yeah. It's Congratulations on connects. your success in making it in the system. And I think especially getting Iono Kanto on your side. Yeah. Um, he has fully acclimated to no longer being in academia. Uh, she's, you know, she's in that weird phase between getting her degree finalized and getting a job. So she's fully given up a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and Minerva is not going to tell anyone anything about her private musings, although Minerva does plan to have a conversation with Iona. Okay. We'll awesome. see how that goes. I love how per usual, when we have a problem, our solution was to throw money at it and it made her happy. Yeah, right. <laughs> 
I mean, you spent uh, close to 6,000 credits this episode, so... Yeah, yeah but I'm guessing also... your wallet has to be hurting right now. And it's didn't... lower than we'd like. Didn't we also just get paid? Like, you got 20, paid 24 We did 000. get paid 24K, exactly. Yeah. So we, we, we at, at this point, in the group funds, we actually have 56,000. So it's not a little, but we do have an auction we have to win. Uh, so that's yeah. true. And we have, have to outbid with that. Essentially, <laughs> uh, issue a payment of, you know, something like closer to twenty k in terms of reserving some for maintenance in the future. As as a player, I was wondering if we needed Slicer, depending how this Chase situation went. I mean, Spon- you know, Slicer was... could take care of Chase real easy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, look at that! We got it's paid, just... and our our buyer's not alive anymore. We'll just go ahead and keep the <laughs> pen. <laughs> The spy device that's currently uh, listening to everything we do. Yeah. <laughs> really Possibly, curious. Who knows? Because, I mean, you pinpointed yeah. where it's going, but we don't know anything about that. At least, I don't think we know anything about that planet where it's communicating to. So we have no idea who could be listening, I guess is my point. Yeah. But we do know that it's in that sector, right? Like, that that's is the one thing that I did get from it. Zero, zero, right. zero, nine. Yep. Yeah. This ship is theoretically capable of making that transit if it makes one. I think you need to make two blind spike jumps. So yeah, okay. Again, you need a yeah, you need a navigator who's better than your current navigator to do that. Yeah, you need I'm to sorry be a specialist to say in you're just, yeah yeah you need a you need a specialist in navigation to make that happen for sure. Uh, just the ability to roll three d six is huge. You absolutely do not want to come up with double ones on a roll like oh, that. Man. What if Van V's mother works for the perimeter agency? What if Van V's mother is Johnson? <laughs> oh my. <laughs> that's the future. Bodies aren't what they used to be. I mean, that's gonna that's a whole thing we haven't even explored yet. I think <laughs> probably not though i think probably not <laughs> I, i'm still going with uh when you said she's the ilkhan nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean she's she got alien? she got a uh, specialist in um because it's a piloting role for navigation right now right yeah i think it's a piloting role yes yeah yeah if you got if you got you know specialist in piloting we could do we could do some pretty dangerous shit that's true. You would it be also, a leaf on the wind. It would help if you were an expert so you could re-roll if you failed. Partial expert. I, uh, I mean, th- you're, you're basically saying to change my entire character. Yeah, shoot, I, that's uh, what like, I'm yeah. saying. I'm saying oh, okay. that your character is probably not going to be the god-level navigator necessary to oh, make it. because of the re-roll. Because yeah. of the re-roll, yeah. I mean... 3d6 drop lowest with a re-roll makes hitting 11 plus a lot easier. Wait, how, I'm sorry, how do you get to the third dice? Where does that come from? Specialist gives you 3d6 yeah, yeah. and then the, 4d6. If you take the, the second tier, yeah. Yeah. Like I have, I took specialist in program, so I roll 3d6 drop lowest. And if Wait, I, I plan to take it a second time. Specialist being the second level Foki? It's a first and second mm. level Foki. It, it has two tiers. There's a first and second level to it. Oh, and it's okay, and it's separate than Starfire. Yes. yes. Okay. I was like, I'm I have second level Starfire, which is all about piloting. Okay, I nope. gotcha. It's its yeah. own thing. And I if agree. you take both ranks you, in you it, you basically get need both and lowest. expert if you want to discover new systems. You you need a expert specialist. If you want to uncover new star systems, well, so we, add, hire one. we need to send a message to your brother and tell him to become an expert. <laughs> I well, think he already uh, is an expert. Well, there you go. Tell him to right? work did, on navigation. You did, a, you did a crew status on him. I believe he is oh, an expert. That's true. I mean, you told him to become a paramedic, which is quite different from yes, a astrologer yeah. pilot. Uh, that's true. <laughs> Let me get my notes. I'm pretty sure I wrote his character sheet down somewhere. Well, I mean, not uh, depend depending on our timeline here. I just hit level four, not level five. I can take another Foki. Yeah. 
and then I could take I could take specialist piloting. It wasn't my plan, but I see how the more combat stuff I take, it the the more I get into trouble. Perhaps I should go away. We can you about it. Listen, you don't have to do (laughs) all that. You guys have money. You can hire people. Exactly. And you don't even have to hire people. You can have a custom design virtual intelligence that is an expert class virtual intelligence that's a specialist in piloting that has both specialist and starfare it will cost a metric fuck ton of money but it will also never betray you Hmm. yeah i mean the only other folk i wanted to take was and as we've learned if anybody's uh, if anybody tries to mess with the programming on that that navigation VI, Minerva is depressingly aware of the inner workings of VI programming. <laughs> oh, <laughs> would, Minerva, be, would be able to tell if somebody else has been in it. What would you so say is your, your? What are you very experienced with turning a VI into a friend and repeating? <laughs> yeah, modifying oh, VI programming. <laughs> I mean, the only other focus I, I, or focus I wanted to take was Tinker. And I'm trying to think. That's have a fun I one. Had, well, have I had to make a s- single fixed role yet? I don't think so. <laughs> so it's, well, well, we yeah. also haven't. I mean, the mod is such a situation. Modify, like, listen, you can modify the ship. You can modify your weapons. Yeah. It's kind it of just neat. hasn't come up. Yeah. Yeah. And we we've got a, a week workshop, here. right, to do it. We've got I mean, up when to you're a doc, week here. You are in a workshop. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. We've got up to a week here where you can choose to do some work on the ship. Tinker, tinker. Oh, just to be clear, you need a shipyard to work on the ship. But right when you're docked, you you have access to like the spaceport workshops. Yeah, could work really on money. the guns and stuff. All right, you rolled four d six, Quentin. Your top two are a four and a four, so that's an eight. That would oh, not have been. Uh... Good enough to take you to another system. You probably will that's be true. That's true. That die. will be my health. Oh, your new health is fourteen hit points. Oh shoot! Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Plus, yeah. how much constitution? Zero. Oh, you're <laughs> super murderable, my guy. You're totally, still very vulnerable. Oh, unbelievable well, that you're fourth but... level and you have fourteen hit points. <laughs> what, yeah. what page is that uh, leveling thing on? I forgot about that. Oh, advancement. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. Let's see. I can activate and give myself an armor class of 17 at this point. So that's at least my only saving grace. Character advancement is 56. Oh, I was almost there. All right. There we go. What place is one of the easy ones? So it's four. Oh yeah, four is not one where you get a new foci. Anybody getting any new skills that would surprise me or anyone withholding skill points for some reason? All right, Ludeman, I'm going to require a full write-up of all of the new psychic stuff you get because you have you to it. spend in psychic disciplines and you pick, do. You can pick up a new talent or maybe you have to pick up a new talent. Uh, not, well, sure. yeah. It, if, it's if specific I for psychics. Increase, they have very specific rules. When I increase a skill, I get a new talent by default as part of it. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to increase give us a preview as to which talent or uh, which brands of psychicness you may or may not be increasing i believe i'm going to increase telekinesis to level two uh mm-hmm. with this one am i doing that right i guess i'll see well, you know I'm you already have telekinetic power. armory right i do i do and then, yep. and then level two i can pick a few interesting things the debate right now is is mostly between uh thermokinesis which is fun because I can melt and uh, freeze things. And telekinetic expertise, which basically makes the basic version of this free. Yeah, you can just, well, you can be walking forward and wave a hand and get your coffee into your hand. and just Exactly. Yeah. Impact sump is pretty interesting, right? Like it's a single negation yeah. of physical damage only though. So like Van V could vaporize me very easily still with his laser pistol that he's, you know, one shot, one kill on. But <laughs> if he were to shoot me with a slug, then I could say no, just once. <laughs> so, you know, these are good options. You would. Slip field I mean, is interesting, if, but like If super it only blocks uh, physical damage, it does mean that Minerva's pistol wouldn't be very good against you. There you go. I have um, a mag pistol. 
in the announcements part of my discord i have a sources that numbers game that i played with eric bogaris where i was the captain and we were playing first edition which had very similar psychic rules but i had the psychic mutation that i didn't need to sleep and so <laughs> at some point i got the ability to permanently tele telepathically bond with people without paying any e the like effort so it was called like pp back then right. and uh also have enough dexterity to control all the ship controls so i literally just <laughs> sat in the chair all day long and would talk to people and bring myself whatever i needed and my character was a fucking weirdo he was so <laughs> weird <laughs> While everyone else was sleeping, he he made like hollow chronicles and like wrote short <laughs> stories and stuff. It he was just so messed up. <laughs> Not sleeping destroyed him. Okay, that's a lot of fun. Van V, you are at twenty nine fucking hit points. There's and a that tank. roll is it's okay. It's all right. It's not. It's better than average. I think so. I, th I think the part that makes it crazy is the the partial warrior gets you plus two per level. Mm -hmm. And your constitution bonus is per level. Yeah. I mean, yeah. of the 29, that's that's 12 of it right there. You can probably yeah. survive being hit by a rocket now. All right. Add it to the to-do list. <laughs> <laughs> I, I suppose since you have a proclivity for accidentally causing violence. Yeah. Um, You're very I survivable in combat now. You could be shot three or four times and walk it off. Yeah. I should mention, because I am supposed to make this declaration about my armature, mm -hmm. yeah. that my armature is set to uh, to detonate and destroy the core that's in it. Okay. Should so it be reduced to zero hit points? You'll snap back to the core on the ship then. So I go back okay. to the ship and the body is destroyed. Sure. Be real bad if the ship and the armature are destroyed at the same time, but that's it, life. It would be. <laughs> be real bad if, you know, just... Van V or Quentin died normally without a backup. <laughs> and I I don't know, it doesn't say anything about it, but it says that the armature explodes, so I don't know if that's you know, dangerous okay. to anybody standing we'll next to it or not. We'll talk about it when it happens. Okay. <laughs> I don't so, know that any This is of why you we need to be know. nice with this Jace guy cuz if my armature explodes, this is the guy we'll probably have to talk to. Legit, though, I mean, like, he's a good contact <laughs> in general, but he obviously is, you know, it's gonna be interesting. So we can't take a skill level three until we're to be level on the higher six. Level. Yep. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I've, huh. I've got X, I've got XP spent into skills that aren't just shy of trying to get rank three because I'm not high enough level for three. So. Yeah, that means I either have to level two things to level one or one thing to level two and hold on to a point. You're supposed to spread your points out to have a broad variety of skills as you level, but mm. sure, you can just become if an extreme want. specialist. An extremely good pilot without specialists. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a few skills in any structure on this planet we're on at this point. And at this point, I'm also <laughs> I've got fix and no and lead and pilot and program and shoot. Why would you use yeah. telekinesis? You have a reloadable ship's gun that will do a better job. Well, I'm just saying. You're like, I could I use my mind or I could just I can... hold this trigger down. <laughs> We're not on the ship right now. Okay. Well, that's true. What if we need to leave any building and I don't want to use the door? Oh, my shoot is still zero. <laughs> We're changing that. The you, only one you've who's nailed those shots, shots and your shoot is zero? Yeah. Bad at shooting. <laughs> Dude. I'll, so I'll just <laughs> I'll up my shoot and up my no. They're both level one now. I think. Yeah. All right. So I get, I get four points for a partial expert. <laughs> yes, you get a lot more points than I do. One of them yeah. just has to go to a non-combat, which no accounts for. So, I will basically be at level zero for most non-psychic skills for most of the time. 
Uh, yeah, but now you can teleport to the bridge with your coffee in hand and be like, exactly. What's up? We make it? Let's go. It's such a Holden move from the expanse. He shows up, he's drinking coffee on the bridge. Every scene. <laughs> yeah, it's been my life for a while. Show up to meetings, coffee. How you doing? I try to capture that kind of feeling with Yono just showing up with coffee. Decaf yeah. to a meeting. Oh, midnight meeting? Sure. Coffee. You I mean, you could always do that extra. On. It's important. I mean, you could always do the extra measure and have her shaving off the tips of matches to stick in her coffee. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? Yeah, that was a thing in the in the um, beginning of the first season. I have no recollection of that. That's insane. Oh, yeah. Why? That, that was a thing. But why? I, I don't know. That's insane. <laughs> it was. A, it was. They they made it a so whole scene where he learned it from another crew member on the. On the, it had, uh, listen, the first it had been a long time It'll since I saw, kick. saw. I remember the weirdest details. All right, holding <laughs> on the can't. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Um, the experience yeah, is so good. Yeah, he learned it on the can't. Uh, yes, absolutely. I really enjoyed. It. I just yeah, finished it Andor, and, and seriously, Andor is amazing. Andor is, is incredible. You really so got to get to episode three for it to start popping off, and then it just completely off the rails. Yeah, it's really yeah. good. I love it. I I still can't believe Disney made a movie. Or a series that basically is like, man, terrorism. Let's show you how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely mind bendingly insane. All right. Do we have any announcements, final thoughts for our people here? I, am, of course, have a new show called The Intro Hour, uh, which is Friday from 8 to 9, where we do talks like this for one whole hour. And if you hop on Discord, you can submit questions for me to ask the audience and my live, uh, my live chatters. That's what I got. Anybody else got something to talk about? Mm, had a great no, time. Not. <laughs> nope. I'm glad you guys had a good time. Just I'm really here yes. to help you guys have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back next week with Supreme Master Jace Bronwyn and. The old the style, no, the old style intros <laughs> where some where there's a a scene that happens somewhere else. Ah, I'm excited. I, just, I thought we were going to do a lot this episode, so I didn't want to. You know, we literally got to the planet. I got us exactly where I thought we were going to end a couple minutes late. Okay, you know what I mean? Like it took a, we no, got there. We got there. We got there. All right. Oh, gas but, picked up refugees. Huh? Is that <laughs> is that the ending screen? Huh? What? <laughs>